What is going on YouTube? In today's video, we're going to be checking out a special handheld. So this handheld is not like anyone that I've personally seen before. It's very similar to a Switch. So if you've got a Nintendo Switch, this handheld might appeal to you. Because what I'm calling this handheld is the Switch Pro for PC players. This handheld is called the One X Player 2. Some of the biggest highlights of the One X Player from my experience is for example, it's got a way larger screen. As a matter of fact, it's got the largest screen that I've seen in the handheld, and I love it. It's also got a larger battery capacity, which is great for gaming longer without having to plug it in or charge it up. So inside the box, there were three compartments. Inside the first compartment, there was a 65 watt power adapter and a detachable braided USB-C cable for charging the device. Inside the next box, there were two detachable switch style controllers. And finally, the OXP2 main module was sitting in the last compartment. There was nothing else in the box, but as with a lot of other handhelds, accessories can also be bought alongside the OXP2 if needed. OXP2 is just short for 1X Player 2, so keep in mind that I'll be using both names interchangeably throughout the video. Now, let's start by taking a look at the main unit. The first thing I noticed when I picked it up was the weight, and this was without even attaching the controllers. The controllers alone don't add very much weight when added, but the console does look a lot larger with them on. This is definitely the heaviest handheld I've ever used to date, coming in at around 848 grams. The OXP2 comes in two different color options. There's a midnight black, and then there's a snow white version. The front side is largely comprised of a massive 8.4 inch touchscreen with a maximum of 2560 by 1600 for screen resolution. There's also some decent sized bezels around the screen, just like you would see on the Steam Deck if you're familiar with that. The screen on the OXP2 is certainly the largest I've seen in a gaming handheld and I love it. The back of the console looks great and it also comes equipped with a very minimal kickstand like you'd see on a Switch. There's also an inlet air vent on the back there for cooling the unit. The controls are completely detachable like I said, which is really nice for a console of this size and connecting or disconnecting them is fast and easy just like with the Switch as well. They're super lightweight and only work when attached to a hand grip which needs to be bought separately as an add-on. For this video I don't have that so we'll mainly be checking out the OXP2 as a full-fledged handheld. The controllers use an Xbox style layout with alternating Hall Effect joysticks, ABXY buttons, a D-pad, and the usual left and right trigger buttons. There is also a menu and a back button on opposite sides around the top area of each controller, a mode and an LED button at the bottom area of the right controller, and finally, on the bottom area of the left controller there is an Xbox button. When you flip both controllers around you'll notice two small buttons, and this is how you disconnect them from the main unit. On one side of each controller as well, there's pogo pins for connecting to the main unit. The joysticks aren't full sized, which I thought was kind of weird for a console of this size, but that was an easy fix with the use of some thumbstick caps. Whenever both controllers are connected, the LED lighting around the analog sticks and the bottom area lights up orange. Unfortunately, there's no customization for those lights, so keep that in mind. On top of the device, there's a power button which also works for putting the OXP2 in and out of sleep mode. It's not very quick, but it works. Then there's an X1 and X2 button which can be customized as volume controls, but by default, the X1 button will minimize your application and the X2 button will pull up the on-screen keyboard whenever you need it. Lastly, there's a turbo button up there which will quickly pull up the OXP software which we'll check out in a bit here. Up there also is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack a USB 4.0 Type-C port for both power and data transfer, a USB 3.0 Type-A port, and finally, a micro SD card slot for extra storage. There's also an outlet air vent at the top there for pushing out heat generated by the console. At the bottom, there's another USB-C port, but this one only accepts power, so no data transfer. There's also a 5-pin magnet for attaching the add-on keyboard accessory, which I also do not have for this video, but that will be a cool accessory that you can use to convert it into some sort of a laptop, a mini laptop. Finally, there's two Harman Audio EFX speakers on both ends underneath the console there. As for specs, it's in the same class as all of the other powerful 6800U devices that have been hitting the market lately. It comes with AMD's Ryzen 7 series 6800U, 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, and 512 gigabytes of fast 2280 style NVMe SSD. 
Now, what I've got is just a base model, which means there's other combinations with higher RAM or storage specs. They all come with the same processor, so the difference in performance between them is only going to matter when there is need for more RAM. The RAM capacity won't affect gaming much as the GPU will probably bottleneck the console most of the time before the RAM is able to even use up to the 16 gigabytes that's on the base model. Unless you plan on doing some crazy RAM intensive work on these little handhelds. The OXP2 is a handheld that comes equipped with Windows 11. Now that also means that you have to deal with common Windows OS issues like driver updates and the occasional malfunctions. I personally ran into one of those at some point where Windows update supposedly replaced the AMD driver in the system. I had the same thing happen to me with the INEO 2 so I did the same thing I did there which was delete the driver using device manager and then reinstalled using the AMD driver auto detect tool. It wasn't anything crazy to fix but those little things can be a bit annoying sometimes, let's be honest. If you're already used to PC gaming on a laptop or even a desktop, this shouldn't be news to you and you'll do just fine with the OXP2. Having Windows 11 pretty much makes this a tablet style handheld too, especially without the controllers attached. You can use the main unit for things like surfing the web or watching movies with the large 2.5K display. You can also hook it up to an external monitor or TV using the USB-C port on the top side for a more extended desktop experience. If you want more GPU power out of the OXP2, it can also be connected to an eGPU using the powerful USB-C port at the top. I don't have one to test this out, but I've seen it work in some other video. With Windows installed, that also means access to all of the same game launchers you'd find on a full-fledged Windows PC. That includes Xbox Game Pass, Steam, Epic, and a whole lot more. Most of my games are bought on Steam, but I also have a Game Pass subscription, so I'm glad they're both fully accessible on the OXP2. There's also Bluetooth 5.2 on the console for hooking up wireless devices like earbuds or external controllers without drops in connection. The only problem that I've got with Windows on a handheld is that it isn't very user friendly. The One X Player 2 does not come with any software for a handheld mode like the IA Space on the IA Neo 2 or even the gaming mode on the Steam Deck. But if you want something similar to those, Play Nights is a great option to check out. I used the free version and just set it to full screen mode for a more console-like experience and it looks great. It will pull in all of the games that you've got installed on the console into one central space for you to quickly access them and do more. Even though the OXP2 doesn't come with the handheld mode installed, it still comes with proprietary software that provides access to controls for quickly changing system settings like screen resolution, TDP, GPU frequency, and a whole lot more. For games that have been installed locally on the OXP2, expect about the same level of performance as you would from other 6800U Windows handhelds with the only issue here being the highest screen resolution. As I mentioned earlier, the OXP2 comes equipped with a 2.5K maximum screen resolution which is great but unfortunately not for every game. I wasn't able to get a smooth gaming session out of most games that I tried at that resolution but some games like Mad Max had no issues running with frame rates hanging in the high 40s and upwards. Keep in mind that playing at the maximum resolution will drain the battery a lot faster. I also found that the 6800U chip handles quite a good amount of AAA games at a lower resolution of 1200p. And if you want to really push the battery and improve frame rates, then playing at the lowest resolution of 800p is the best way to go. My preference is to always play at 1200p and only switch to 800 when I want to extend battery life or if a game is really that demanding graphically. For reference, 800p is the Steam Deck's native and maximum screen resolution. Throughout my experience, the large 8.4 inch screen made the gaming experience on the OXP2 a whole lot better than the 7 inch screens on most other handhelds that I'm used to. Now, getting the best gameplay performance out of the OXP2 requires a good combination of TDP, screen resolution, and in-game graphics settings. Generally, the higher the TDP is set, the better games are supposed to perform, but that also means that more heat is generated and the battery dies a lot faster. The maximum TDP that you can set on the OXP2 is 28 watts, which is when it's at its full load or operating at max. For my tests, I ran most of the games around the 15 to 28 watts mark. Now, I had some requests to test FIFA 23, so I decided to start with that. I installed it first on the OXP2 to get a feel for how it handles. It ran great most of the time with cutscenes being the only times I noticed major stutters or lags. I played at the maximum resolution locked to 60 FPS and although it was very much playable, 
It wasn't the smoothest gameplay with some stutters and lags, but mainly during those cutscenes. At a lower resolution of 1200, the performance was a bit better, but there was still a bit of stuttering going on during the cutscenes. Actual gameplay was buttery smooth though. Switching to the lowest resolution of 800p, actual gameplay and cutscenes both did a whole lot better with the least amount of stutters happening. For a good balance between the best performance and graphics, you want to go for the 1200p resolution from my experience. Essentially, what you need to know is that with the right adjustment of the TDP and the screen resolution, one can get some really nice gaming sessions on FIFA 23 using the OXP2. The next game I tried was Spider-Man Miles Morales. And this is a recent PlayStation port to the PC that falls into the category of AAA games with a lot of graphics demand. At the maximum resolution and TDP with game graphics set to the lowest, the game played okay. It held frame rates around the 30 mark with some occasional dips below and spikes above. At 1200p with the same TDP and graphics preset, gameplay was better and I was able to maintain between low to mid 40 frames per second, which to me is a solid balance between graphics and performance. Now, at 800p, the gameplay was buttery smooth and I was able to get between 50 and 60 frames per second. This is still with graphics set to the lowest preset and the maximum 28 watt TDP as well. With everything else remaining the same, I tried playing with the TDP reduced to both 15 and 20 watts for an extended battery life. Frame rates held around the same 50 to 60 at 20 watts and dropped a little to between 40 and 50 at 15 watts, but the game still ran great throughout. The last game I tried out was Batman Arkham Knight. Now, this is an older AAA game that's still a bit demanding graphically. I first tried playing this at the maximum TDP and screen resolution with the lowest graphical settings enabled, and I was able to maintain decent mid-range frame rates closer to between 30 and 45, which looked and played great, but I'm sure it also eats up the battery a lot faster. At 1200p, which is my preferred resolution to play most games, Using the same TDP and graphics settings, frame rates did a whole lot better and I was able to maintain high 40s and high 50s, which was really smooth. At 800p, the performance improved even more and it was able to hold closer to 60 frames per second a lot better. I was also able to extend the battery life on the OXP2 by reducing the TDP to 20 watts while still maintaining close to that 60 frames per second top performance. Even after reducing the TDP to 15 watts, it was still able to hold close to 60 frames per second most of the time. One of the best ways to maximize battery life for a lot of games is by playing at a lower resolution with graphics set to low and TDP around the low to mid-range mark. For me, I like to play most of my games at 1200p on OXP2 with the TDP set to around 20 watts. These are just some of the games that I've tried so far, but I'm pretty confident a lot of others would work great on the console as well. The OXP2 comes equipped with Wi-Fi 6E, which is perfect if you plan on using this for cloud gaming. If you didn't already know, cloud gaming is literally game streaming, so it doesn't matter how powerful the GPU of the streaming device is. The Wi-Fi connection stability is always going to be more important. Between the OXP2 and my Wi-Fi 6 routers, the connection was solid throughout my entire test and through every game that I streamed. I didn't notice any major lags or latency, which is great as it allows me to easily access my Xbox cloud gaming through my Game Pass Ultimate subscription on a device that I can bring around with me. The OXP2 also works great for general use cases like watching videos, surfing the web, and general productivity. It's essentially a Windows PC after all, and the large screen is perfect for using this as a tablet. Tack on the magnetic keyboard and you end up with a small laptop. The 2.5K display also looks great when watching anything on it, and if you plan on using this for anything else besides gaming that might be RAM intensive, you'll want to consider looking into a model with more RAM or storage. So we've established that the OXP2 is pretty large, but that's not all for nothing. The battery size it comes with is also pretty large. In fact, it's the largest that I've seen in a handheld to date. It's got a 65.5 watt hour battery, which can last up to 20% longer than the Steam Deck and most other handhelds out there. That right there has to be one of my favorite things about the OXP2 since battery life on a handheld is extremely important to me. It also uses a very fast charging system that will get the battery from 20 to 60% in one hour. To extend the battery life further, you can always use conservative settings while you're gaming, like setting the resolution to 800p or reducing the TDP. I also love that charging can be done from the top of the bottom for a lot of flexibility. Having two ports on the OXP2 also means that you can charge your console while using other USB-C devices like AR glasses, for example. 
As for cooling, the ORXP2 uses a smart cooling system that increases or reduces the internal fan speeds automatically as you tweak different performance settings like the TDP and the resolution. You can also switch to a manual control of the fans where you get to control them as you please. As for how loud the fan gets, I'd say it's pretty similar to the Steam Deck, but maybe not even as loud as that to be honest. Overall, I think the OXP2 is a really solid piece of tech that has its own place in the handheld market right now. If you're on a search for a handheld that's built like the Switch with detachable controllers and a built-in kickstand, then the OXP2 is certainly that. It's also one of the very few handhelds out there with a large 8-inch plus screen, so if more screen size is what you want, then it's a solid option for that as well. The much longer battery life is another reason to go for this over a lot of the others out there. Now, if you value portability or have very small hands, then the console's large size might put you off just a little bit. But also keep in mind that the controllers are detachable, providing more flexibility when gaming. As for the price, it's not exactly competitive in comparison to some of the other handhelds out there, but I still think it'll be perfect for the right person. Let me know down in the comment section what your thoughts are on the OXP2 and if you would consider using something like it. I've also provided a link to find out more information about it for anyone who might be interested. Thank you guys for your time, and I'll catch you all next time. It's Tommy, and I'm out, y'all.